endeavor to be before you very long tonight, but I do want to exhort you tonight in the Word of God. Amen. Exhort you tonight in the Word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, give you a word to strengthen you. Father, we thank you. Most everlasting God, we thank you tonight uh, for your goodness and your grace. And we're just so grateful, Lord, for how you have just allowed us to uh, see another holiday. And, and, and you've allowed us to, to, to have another Thanksgiving. And God, we're grateful. Hallelujah. Uh, someone didn't make it, but Father, we thank you for just life tonight. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your keeping power. And we just thank you, Lord, that we're just reverent in this hour. We're, we're, we're so reverent, Father, and we're so mindful of your many blessings. We're mindful of all the things that you've done. And so, Father, I pray that you would just bless us around this word tonight. Every man, woman, boy, or girl that's tuning in. Thank you, Lord, that we have an ear to hear what you're saying tonight, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight. I want to teach directly from the Word of God. Amen. And I want to teach on, amen, very simple but very profound. Stay with me. I believe something's going to be said that's going to bless you tonight. As you cook in those collard greens, amen, something is going to be said uh, to bless you tonight. And, and I want to talk, amen, concerning give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, amen. Just type that in, give thanks, give thanks. You know, I was just meditating, amen, on all the things the Lord has done. And I, I want us to just pause tonight or at least slow down long enough to recognize that as believers, we should be involved in thanksgiving. As believers, we should be involved in thanksgiving. Now, now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about a holiday or turkeys or uh, just family get-togethers. But, but I'm saying that as believers, we should be thanksgivers. We should be thanksgivers. Uh, we should be thankful. We should be thankful. And I believe that realizing all that Christ has done for us and the many blessings he's bestowed upon our life, I believe that we should be the most thankful people on the planet. However, in this season, I want to now tell you it isn't enough to be thankful if we are not also, amen, thanksgiving. I noticed the word, I just begin to think about it, I noticed the word thanksgiving. It's not thanksgiving, but it's thanksgiving. Could it be that it is only, could it be that it is really only authentic thanks when it's combined with giving? I'll say that again. Could it be that it's only authentic thanks when it is combined with giving? Before you get too nervous, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, giving in relationship to money. I'm just questioning whether it's really thanks if it isn't expressed. Oh, yeah. I said, I'm questioning, is it really thanks if it isn't expressed? If we don't give thanks, then it's just thanks thoughts. It's just in our mind. It's just what we mull over in our mind. So I'm convinced that there are really no benefits to being thankful if you don't practice thanksgiving. How would anyone know that we are thankful in our thankful if our thankfulness doesn't translate and spill over into thanksgiving? You know, we sing a song in church, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. G give thanks uh, because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Thanks is what we do. It's what we give. Uh, scripture says, give God the glory that's due to his name. And in this season, I want us to learn not just to be thankful, and we say I'm thankful, but, but I want us to learn to participate in thanksgiving. Not just the food you're bringing or the dish that you're preparing or the cups that you may be bringing or, or, or whatever you may be doing, not just what you contribute in the natural, but I want us to be very specific because I think for this to happen, we must learn how to practice targeted thanks. Oh, yeah. We must learn how to practice targeted thanks. 
Otherwise, we just have a tendency to say a lot of thank yous and cast around that word without really expressing or communicating in meaningful ways uh, or to the right recipient. And let me suggest tonight that there are two targets that we should aim our thanks thanks, uh, towards, uh, and it's modeled for us in Scripture. Uh, Our thanks must be targeted. Hear me what I say tonight. Our thanks must be targeted. Number one, a target number one to God. Our thanks must be targeted to God. Can I exhort you tonight? I know that it's obvious that we should give thanks or uh, thanks give to God, but it's concerning to me that that we not only have the ability but the uh, 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 propensity to come into his presence oftentimes and give the God of the universe, the one uh, to not the uh, one that who created us, but has provided all things for us, our salvation, our redemption, and then blesses us beyond what we deserve. And we practice thanksgiving rather than thanksgiving. But, but you ought to make up in your mind tonight, that's not my testimony. I'm not thanksgiving, I'm thanksgiving. It's amazing to me that we have to watch our posture at times because oftentimes we come into his presence. We come into our worship environment. Hallelujah. And sometimes when we're in his presence, we play. When we're in his presence, we yawn. We daydream in his presence sometimes. Sometimes we're distracted. Sometimes we're on our cell phone. Sometimes we are, praise God, distracted. We nod off. We become bored. Uh, We turn our attention to us. We close our mouth. We refuse to raise our head and our hands. Uh, And sometimes we keep our thanks and the rocks cry out. But we must intentionally and purposefully, even sacrificially, target God with thanks. We are instructed to give thanks. Let me exhort you through the word of God tonight. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 16 and 34. 1 Corinthians 16 and 34. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Look at Psalm 66 and 8. Give honor and thanks to God, O people, and let all hear how great he is. Give honor and thanks to God, O people, and let all hear how great he is. Come on. This is our posture. Look at Psalm 104. And you know it. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, when you're coming into my presence, uh, if you're going to come properly or the right way, you got to enter with thanksgiving. Thanks is the means by which we enter his presence. How could church be different if we entered giving thanks? How would worship services change if you intentionally entered with thanks? Psalm 107 and 22 says, let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of the works with joyful singing. Colossians 4 and 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. So, so in other words, thanksgiving should invade and be the underlying theme of prayer. When you look all throughout the word of God, Paul illustrates this posture perfectly. Look how often he targeted God with thanks. One man called the apostle Paul the thankful apostle. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How would you like that to be your nickname, the thankful one? Mm -hmm. The thankful man of God, the thankful woman of God, the thankful apostle, the thankful prophet. Let me just give you some scriptures tonight how Paul targeted his thanksgiving. Romans 6 and 17 says, God be thanked. Romans 7 and 25 says, I thank God. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 15, Paul said, thanks be unto God. 
Colossians 1 and 3 says, we give thanks to God. My, my, my. Colossians 1 and 12 says, giving thanks unto the Father. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13 says, we thank God without ceasing. 1 Timothy 1 and 12 says, praise God, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 Timothy 1 and 3 says, I thank God. Uh, Philemon 1 and 4 says, I thank my God. You see, over and over and over, no matter what the apostle was teaching, no matter how much he was correcting, no, how, no matter how much he was pulling the church and people together, he always made time to give God thanks. He was the thankful apostle. Andre Kraut said it right. How can I say thanks for all the things you've done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and all that I hope to be, I owe it all to thee. And we hear that's sung and we agree, praise God. But if you're not careful, our own small view of thanks, praise, and worship and words keep us from targeting God. Hallelujah, praise God. You got to know in this hour who you're thankful to, what you're thankful for. We say we're thankful to God, but do you practice thanksgiving to God? I want to challenge you, even during this season, take a moment, take some time, and actually intentionally thank God. Target him with your thanks. We tend to just think about thanking him, but do you stop long enough to actually give him thanks? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Target your thanks. Number two, our first target, God. Number two, your second target. People. Somebody type that in, people. I, I want to declare to you tonight that it isn't enough just to target God with thanks. We must always, and in addition, target those, amen, in our lives that we are grateful for with thanks. When we are thankful to God, it also is necessary to recognize, watch this, that God works, operates, and uses people to accomplish his purposes and his plans. People, are, people, praise God, hallelujah, are assigned by God to bless us, assist us, challenge us, serve. And they deserve, watch this, thanksgiving as well. And we need to pause to practice targeted things. Why? Listen to what the Bible says. We're told in the word, if we can't love people we see, then we can't love God who we can't see. I submit to you likewise that we can't claim to be thankful to God if we aren't also thankful to those who are around us. My God. And I realize that it's easier to thank God sometimes than it is to thank people. But you ought to be grateful in this hour. Amen. That I thank God. You, you ought to thank God for people that he's assigned in his life. Thank God for the family he's given you. Thank God for the friends he's given you. Thank God for the relationship he's given you. Thank God for the business partners he's given you. We ought to be thankful and it ought to be targeted. Here's what I'm saying tonight. Out of the overflow of a grateful heart, we must also target people and participate in thanksgiving. Watch this. We got a model right in the word of God. We have a model in the word of God. We can go right back to the apostle Paul as a prime example of targeted thanks. See, see, he wasn't just the apostle that targeted God and said, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. But over and over throughout the New Testament, you see the apostle Paul, amen, giving God thanks for others. Romans 1 and 8, I thank my God for you all. 1 Corinthians 1 and 4, I thank my God always on your behalf. Ephesians 1 and 16, I cease not to thank God for you. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2, we give God thanks always for you all. 
First, Second Thessalonians 1 and 3, we are bound to thank God for you always. Second Thessalonians 2 and 13, we are bound to thank God always for you. As you look at those statements over and over again, I think we make a mistake if we read this, praise God, hallelujah, as who we, he's just thanking God for, hallelujah, praise God. But, but, but no, he, he wrote these things, recorded these things. These letters are written, stamped, delivered, and read. These are thank you notes of targeted praise. And you shouldn't be shame and bashful to thank God for who he's placed in your life. You, you shouldn't be shame and bashful. Hallelujah, praise God, to, to put on display who you know God has sent in your life. He is literally picking out individuals and giving thanks to them. Giving God thanks for them. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows these Thanksgiving notes will be read in a public setting and people would look up <laughs> from reading and see the people he's targeting. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if we are bad about practicing thanksgiving towards God, then we're going to be criminal in the level of thanksgiving we practice in regards to the people around us. But you ought to be appreciative. Because if we're not careful, then we make the dangerous assumption and destructive assumption when it comes to people who do things that warrant thanks. And what's the problem? Why can't we be thankful for those that God has placed in our lives? Oh, you know why we can't be thankful? Because we say, oh, they know they appreciate it. So we keep thanks to ourselves. Oh, I don't have to give thanks for them. They already know. They know I appreciate them. They know I love them. Praise God. I found out something. You can't tell nobody enough that you love them. You can't tell anybody enough that you appreciate them. Or, or we say, praise God. Or, you know, sometimes we don't give appreciation the way that we should. Praise God. Because you think they are expected to do what they do in your life. So we fail to distribute our praise because we operate out of a, watch this, hallelujah, a position of entitlement, a spirit of entitlement. Because you think that everybody in your life, they have to do that or they obligated to do that. Hallelujah. But can I submit to you some tonight? People don't have to do anything. People don't have to be nice to you, that they don't have to love you. They don't have to show concern for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pray. People don't have to be nice. You ought to appreciate people for being nice. You ought to appreciate the things that people do in your life. People don't have to. People don't have to give their time, their talent, their trash. People don't have to. You think that's just my mama or that's just my child. That's just my, ain't they supposed to do that? No, 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 no. Be appreciative. Ty type that in. People don't have to do anything. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you should have this spirit of entitlement to take advantage of what God is doing and what God is giving in your life. You know, I thank God for Hosanna Family Church. I thank God for the members, amen, and the leaders and the men and women of God, amen, for the youth, for the adult. I, I thank, I'm like Paul, I give God thanks for you daily. I appreciate the love, the, 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 the support, the community, amen, the corporate anointing, the fellowship, the love. We're called to thank God for each other. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. Come on, somebody type that in. I'm grateful, I'm grateful tonight, hallelujah. So my thanksgiving, watch this, it targeted to God, target to, to people, amen, hallelujah. My last point tonight, hallelujah, uh, 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 <laughs> praise God, hallelujah, amen. Never underestimate the power of thanks. Never underestimate the power of thanks. Can I submit something to you tonight? Thankfulness impacts and mobilizes God. Oh, I hope this is blessing you tonight. Thankfulness impacts and mobilizes God. You know, you know showing gratitude is one of the most simplest yet most powerful things a person can do to defeat problems in their life. 
to defeat depression, oppression, fear. It's one of the most simple but yet most powerful things a person can do to defeat problems. Even if you don't have enough, be grateful. Jesus fed 5,000. All he had was two fish and five loaves of bread. But before he distributed out, before the miracle was worked, it was preceded by thankfulness. Before the miracle was performed, gratefulness preceded the miracle. Could the key to your breakthrough be as simple as, God, I thank you. God, I trust you. God, I'm thankful for what I have right now. Something happens when you thank God for what he's already done and what you believe he will be. Thankfulness impacts and mobilizes God. Well, come on, what the scripture says, come on and magnify the Lord with me. We can't make God any bigger than he is, but our thanks causes him to increase activity in our life. My, my. Let the people say continually, let the Lord be magnified. What we fail to recognize is that the same principle applies to huma humanity. When we give thanks, amen, people can't help but to react and respond. Give the right thanks. A husband will be a better husband. Give the right thanks. A wife will be a better wife. Give the right thanks, amen. In most situations, a waiter will be a better waiter. All because the power of thanksgiving. We fail to act on that and we withhold the very few people need to propel into action. We thank God for you. You, you never know when the enemy wants to, 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 to beat up on people and let them know they're not worth anything or beat up on people, let them know, praise God, they're not doing anything. You don't know. Just being appreciative, it can heal wounds. Just as intentionally as we thank God, we need to thank people and we need to practice that now. My last scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5. 16 through 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's how the NIV reads. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The Message Bible says, be careful no matter what and pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you to belong to Christ Jesus to live. You know, this sums it up. Whether you want to be thankful, you don't feel like it, whatever. Let me tell you what the Word says. It's God's will for you. It's the will of God concerning you. NIV says thankfulness is God's will for you. It occurred to me that there's a lot of talk about the pursuit of God's will. We want to know God's will. God, I want to be in your will. You want to be in God's will? Be thankful. It seems we're in passionate pursuit of knowing God's will, trying this, trying that, fasting, asking for opinions, seeking counsel. And all the time, his will for your life is already clearly and spelled out. And one aspect of that, his will is that you graduate into thanks. It's, it's my will. You want to know when you're in the will of God? When you're thankful. Kill that negative confession. Kill that murmuring and complaining. In spite of it all, God, I am thankful. Paul's first instruction deals with our outlook. He says, rejoice always. Or the Message Bible says, watch this, <clears throat> be cheerful <clears throat> no matter what. Be cheerful no matter what. I'm convinced that most of us will struggle to get to thanksgiving simply because we won't address the first instruction. Be cheerful no matter what. But, beloved, we got to come up to a level of maturity where our life is marked by rejoicing and cheerfulness. I think Paul understood the power in joy. 
My, 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 my. If we know our strength is founded and rooted in joy, then why is it that we struggle to mightily to rejoice or to be cheerful? What does the Bible say? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, our strength is founded and rooted in joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Could it be that we've allowed the external to determine the internal? Take a moment and rejoice and evaluate your rejoice and cheerful level. What, what, what is your posture in this season? Are you sunken, sunken? Are you cranky? Are you downcast? Are you overcast? Paul was big on rejoicing. In Philippians, he repeats the same formula verbatim. Philippians 4 and 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If I can't rejoice in my situation, I rejoice in the God of my salvation. Rejoice in the Lord always. Because God, no matter what's going on in my life, you're still good. God, no matter what's going on in my life, you're still faithful. God, no matter what's going on in my life, you're still worthy. Hallelujah. God, no matter what's going on, hallelujah, you're still all that. And so I rejoice in the Lord always. Perhaps we'd be able to be marked by thanks if we're first marked by rejoicing. To rejoicing, watch this, you have to come, uh, you, have, you, you have to have outward focus and adjust your sight to what's right rather than what's wrong. I said if you're going to rejoice, you got to adjust your sight to what's right rather than what's wrong. Oh, you can rejoice, you can be thankful, I just have to adjust my mindset, Lord Jesus, from what's wrong to what's right. That's why we need faith, folks. You need to walk in faith because hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Faith deals with what I can't see. My God, and so I need to see through the eyes of faith. Praise God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Praise God. I need to adjust my focus. And the main thing, and I'm closing, the main thing I need to do this is because it's the will of God. It's the will of God. It's his will for me to be thankful. He didn't say thank him for all things, but in all things. We give thanks to God, praise God. He said in all things give thanks. You don't have to like what you're going through. He didn't say give thanks for all things. Oh, this is good tonight. He said give thanks in all things, for it's the will of God concerning you. And I said, God, I begin to meditate on that because we know this scripture is so strong. I begin to meditate on that. Praise God. I said, God, well, how can we give you thanks in all things? He said we can give thanks in all things because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. So even the stuff I don't like, even the stuff I don't prefer, praise God, if I love God, uh-huh, and if I'm called according to his purpose, then all things are going to work together for my good. And so I will give him thanks, amen, for all things, for it is the will of God. In all things, in it I got to praise. In affliction I got to praise. In persecution, I got to praise. Even while I'm hurting, I got to praise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Even when I'm at a crossroads, I got to praise. Even when I'm in transition, I got to pray. And my praise is target. And I have to thank him. I'm not going to give my storm that much credit not to praise him. You, you got to tell the devil, I'll praise him in the storm. I'll praise him in the wind. Woo. The rain may be falling. I'll dance in the rain, praise God, because I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth and I'll praise you in this storm. That's what the word says. Rejoice always, pray to give thanks in all circumstances for it is the will of God concerning you. It's the will of God concerning you. Anybody love God tonight? Then all things are working together for your good. Are you called according to his purpose tonight? Then all things are working together for your good. And so you got to realize and understand the purpose of appreciation. 
Because until you thank God from where he's brought you, he will not take you to where he has planned to take you. You got to thank God. You got to thank God how you got to this point. I know you got a lot of things in your future that you believe in God for, but sometimes you got to sort of say, God, I just thank you that you got me to this point. I just think that I've lived long enough to see your goodness at the age I am right now. 2020 has been a rough year. Amen. But God, I thank you that you've allowed me. Somebody didn't get this far. I think that you've allowed me to make it to this point. <clears throat> Until you thank God for where he has brought you, he will not take you to where he has planned for you. And when you get to that place of thanksgiving, your struggles will reduce and the glory will show up when you live a life of gratitude. What is my last exhortation tonight? Every time the devil reminds you of what God has not done, show him what God has already done. Every time he reminds you what God has not done, show him what God has already done. So the enemy says, praise God, God hasn't done this for you. Hallelujah. And you say, well, come on, let's go down memory lane. Let's look at how many times my back was against the wall. Let's look at how many times I needed God and he came through. Look at how many times he's healed me. How many times he's opened doors for me. How many times he's made ways for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's how you defeat when the enemy attempts you what God hasn't done. Just remind yourself of what he has already done done in the past and if he did it before <laughs> he'll do it again same God right now same God back then this is how we overcome see when David's capability of conquering Goliath was questioned how did he get through it he told him of what God has already done he hadn't conquered Goliath yet, but he has some testimonies in his belt. Oh, my, 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 of what God had already done. And in those past seasons, it was a big deal. But how did he get the fuel to hold on just a little while longer? How did he get the fuel to fight? How did he get the field to keep on going? He told them what God had already done. He said, God has already helped me to kill a lion and a bear. And the same God that helped me kill a lion and a bear is the same God that's going to deliver this uncircumcised Philistine in my hand. I come to let you know, you done been through some things before. And I know there's mountains, glory to God. There's mountains standing before you. There's giants standing before you. There's hard places standing before you. How do you defeat this the same way you defeated that? I remind God, you've already helped me before. Woo! I said, you've already delivered me. I've seen you deliver before. I've seen you bring out before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just type that in if you're with me. He's done it before. He has done it before. Hallelujah. And I take rest in the trustworthiness of God. I take rest in the track record of God. I take rest in the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. I take rest in what he's already done glory to God so 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 when folks want to question your capability Jesus I don't know how you're going to get through this I don't know how you're going to face this he told him what God had already done in 1 Samuel 17 I've seen him do it before hallelujah Go back down memory lane. And if he did that, he'll do this. My, 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 my. He's done it. That's all I can go on, on what he's done before. Matter of fact, what he's done before has given me the faith to deal with what I'm going through right now. See, if he hadn't done that before, I might not have the faith 
to go up against these giants. But, but every time he delivered me, my faith went up to another level. Every time he brought me out, my faith went up another knot. Every time the money was, I wasn't just excited about the money. I was more excited about my faith that went to another level. Holly, yes, I know you're excited about how God healed you, but in addition to that healing, your faith went up another level. In addition to that deliverance, your faith went up another level. I know you thank God for the promotion on your job, but in addition to that promotion, my faith went up to another level. And that's why I'm steady fighting. I'm steady climbing. I'm, 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 I'm steady, praise God, hallelujah, looking for the next thing to conquer. I'm steady going from level to level and from faith to faith, but it's all because of what God has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Back down memory lane. Sometimes you just got to go back down memory lane and say, God, if you've done it before, you have done it again. I've seen you restore before, and I trust that you're going to do it again. Hallelujah. I hope that encouraged you tonight. Psalm 92 and 1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the most high God. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you didn't just come out of that last season. Ooh, that did something to your faith when you came out. See, folk just think you came out. Hallelujah. But they didn't realize you came out with more than just a dance. You came out with another level of faith. <laughs> My God. Hallelujah. You came out with more. Praise God. Hallelujah. You thank God, you know, that you just got a new house. It was deeper than a new house. In addition to that house, I got another level of faith. In addition to that car, praise God, I got another level of faith. I've seen God. In addition to me coming out of debt, I went to another level in my faith. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. So what am I encouraging you tonight? Give thanks. What am I encouraging you tonight? Give thanks unto the God of your salvation. Verbalize it. I thank God for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let folks know. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. Let God know. I thank God for you. And let them know. And let people around you know that you appreciate their role in your life. And don't let it be generic thanks. Let, let it be personal. See, everybody ain't everything to everybody. Everybody's not in the same boat. <laughs> My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Let it be signature. I thank God for you. I thank God for your place in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give God praise. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, type that in. I thank my God. Come on. Type that in. I thank my God. I thank my God. I thank my God. I thank my God. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Father, I thank you tonight for your anointing. I thank you for grace tonight. I thank you, Lord, that I've taught this as you've given it to me tonight. I thank you, Lord, that we are targeted in our thanks. We are targeted in our praise. We're grateful for you, O oh Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. 10,000 hands, it wouldn't be enough. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you for who you've assigned in our life. Thank you, Lord, that even after tonight, we'll never underestimate the power of thanksgiving. We are certainly grateful, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank my God. I thank my God. I thank my God. I thank my God. Hallelujah.